One, two, three, the donkey. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Lawn Feed Podcast Collectively. The Lawn Feed is three dads with a strong passion for lawn care, and we deliver, deliver everything lawn care related to you in a super simplified way that makes it just super easy to listen to uh, in a space where all experience levels are welcome, egos are left at the door, successes are celebrated, and there are no failures. There's only learning moments with a W. Uh, I'm Vince Rudolanko. I'm your host tonight, and with me is Oh, it's Mo Time, Mr. Chris. What's up? And the Dad Bod Lawn, Andrew. Mr. Andrew. Hello. Mr. Andrew. Mr. Chris, how are we tonight, <laughs> fellas? I like that. I think we should go by that from now on. Mr. Andrew, Mr. Chris. Like be super formal about things. One of my kids' friends calls me Mr. Chris. Well, that's what they do at school, right? Like everybody's, they go by the teacher's first names and it's Miss Lisa or Miss Karen or whatever, right? And it's, it's never just Mrs. I think Lassen. I would actually, I, I think I would actually like respond if you'd called me that in public because of that. <laughs> okay. That's official. That's all I'm calling you now. Deal. All right. There we have it. Mr. Chris, Mr. Andrew, I'm Vince. All right, Mr. Vince. Thanks for that intro. That was wonderful. No, he's just Vince. <laughs> just Vince. Okay. Just, just Vince. Vince just fins. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, huge thank you to our sponsor, uh, Twin Cities Seed, for powering this season of the Lawn Feed Podcast. They are built on their reputation of superior service, accuracy, and sustainability with custom blending and packaging, high-performing products, and a team of dedicated experts. Twin Cities Seed is North America's leader in giving DIYers the highest quality of premium and elite grass seed for your next project. Save money on your grass seed by using code LAWNFEED10. And on top of that, receive free shipping by pairing it with promo code FREESHIP24. Twin City Seed proudly serves all of North America. Check them out at TwinCitySeed.com and also TwinCitySeed.ca. And boys, it's almost seeding season if you choose to do the, the spring dance with the seed. It's mm. almost spring that time. Dance. Yeah. Spring dance. Yeah, it is. We're which, close. Which My is weird. Magic not... says 12 days till spring. Isn't that weird? It's not even that March Madness hasn't even started officially yet. And like we're talking about like the go time of lawn care this season. It's pretty bizarre. It's yeah. weird. It's weird too, because Easter's in March. Which is <laughs> Yeah, that, right? That just doesn't happen. It's like they so, knew everything was gonna be early this year. Everything is early. Speaking it's, of early, Chris, how about some uh dad's wins and losses? You got anything good? Speaking of early. I don't know what that means, but sure. He let's hit that thing and fire it right off. A lawn feed tradition where we tap into who we are at heart. Dad! <laughs> this is Dad's Wins and Losses, where we tap into our inner dad bod father figures and highlight some of the recent wins we've experienced as parents. And of course, vent about the embarrassing losses we take each and every day as dads. I love it. That was actually Chris. He he. That was him speaking. <laughs> the yeah, baby voice, helium. Chris. Yeah, baby the Chris. Uh, yeah, I've got some stuff, <laughs> which is and it's kind. Of, it's all kind of wrapped into one. Um, it's just like one big win and loss, it's all kind of put together. Um, so as you two know, uh, I'm a huge hockey fan. Living in Minnesota, uh, have had tickets to go for hockey for a long time. My dad started taking me when I was a little kid and passed that tradition along to my kids. So that's like our thing that we go and do on like a Friday and Saturday night for like a home series. And we've been doing that since basically pre-COVID, which is awesome. Um, but my oldest is seven and he is a, a confident little, little guy. And the greatest tradition in all of sports happens on Friday and Saturday nights in Mariucci Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where right before the game, to be exact, 23 minutes and 30 seconds, the band goes around the concourse and does what they call the Minnesota March, performed by the Minnesota Marching Band. And that is like a thing. And the game started off with our kids loving uh, the games because of the mascot, Goldie. They love to go and just go to the hockey games, 
They don't care about hockey. They don't care about what happens on the rink. They just want to go see Goldie, right? Goldie is the man. Uh, and now that shifted to the marching band. So now everything revolves around the marching band. And what do marching bands do? They play instruments and they march around the concourse. So right before the game starts, they go and do this thing. And uh, long story short, my loss is that I lost my kid because... <laughs> he he wanted to go to the end of the band, which is where all the tubas are, right? The tubas are kind of the caboose of this marching thing. <laughs> and I was under the impression that he was just going to go follow the band to where we just were, which was in the front of the band where they started. So he was just going to march down the whole, like, kind of backside of the concourse. Um. They march really quickly, and I don't think that he even realized this before he was going around with the entire band around the entire concourse of the entire hockey arena doing the Minnesota March with the Minnesota marching band. <laughs> so here I am, like, cr the, the place is a sellout. It's packed. So here I am just trying to, like, dodge through, like, <laughs> elderly people just trying to catch up to these tubas because I can see the tubas. They're obviously tall. I'm tall. Uh, and I can kind of see his head, but then it gets to the point where like, <laughs> they're around the corner, like they're on the opposite side of the arena almost. And I'm like, cut, this is how this is going to go. Like, I'm going to be the guy that gets called to like guest services because they lost like their kid. Well, the loss quickly turned into the win because I get down because they, they stop at where they started once they make their full way around the, the concourse and they do the they do our like fight song it's the minnesota rouser and all of a sudden i just see my kid go straight basically to our seats and we follow him and i was like dude you can't do like did you have fun <laughs> like because he doesn't know he doesn't he didn't even know he did anything wrong right but i was like i had no clue where you were you were halfway across the concourse like ahead of me uh, and I, I, I didn't know where you were. You're seven years old. Anything could happen to you. And he's like, but dad, our seats, section, section 10, row blank, seat blank. That's where I go when we get lost. And if I need to, and if I need someone, I'll go talk to someone in the maroon top with the, with the khakis on that has the Minnesota M on it. Like, I got it. We're good. And I was like, oh, Jesus. All right. So, <laughs> so you got all that, that I taught you. God, so I'm doing something right. Yeah. Uh, but for a while, I lost my kid. We're like, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes around the whole thing. Seems like forever, though. It it seemed like 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm sure we've all kind of been there at some point. We're just like, where did they go? What corner did they turn? And I didn't see. But man. And there was that, like uh, four old people that were on the ground because Chris knocked them over. Yeah. So right. if... um. Yeah, to the elderly couple that I accidentally elbowed. I'm, if you're listening to the Lawn Feed podcast, my sincere apologies. I will buy you a soda on the next go for hockey game. Um, kidding, of course, but man. You know, it's better than, I think you shared a story one time about losing one of your kids at a concert. I think it was last summer. Chris you know, seems to be a... So I, I think maybe we need to have an intervention here real quick. Yeah. Can we put that into yeah. the schedule here or no? Yeah, well, the <laughs> losses quickly turn into wins when we find them. But that's really cool that your son like knew all that. He's like, "Dad, it's okay. Just chill. Go enjoy the game. Go have a soda like, yourself." Luckily, you know, I guess that is the case. We've been like, we he probably knows that place like the back of his hand, <clears throat> like we do. We just didn't know that, right? You know, but so what's the first thing you say if they call you somewhere to come get your kid? Do you go up there and you go, "Oh, something like that." <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, happened again. My bad. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of wins, we did a lot of uh, talk about grass seed and a lot of winning grass seed blends uh, over at Twin City Seed. Uh, we might be a little biased, but, you know, when you look at the data, you look at the cultivars, they speak for themselves. Um, so make sure you guys go over head over there. Um, but we we did a four part series talking about grassy. We talked about tall fescue. We talked about bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass. We talked about printing rye and fine fescues. So make sure you head on back and take a look at those episodes or listen to those episodes, um, especially if you're planning on seeding and you don't know what grass seeds best for you. 
Uh, we do have a free guide as well on our website, so check that out. And guys, if you are listening right now uh, from podcast or if you're following us on uh, on the YouTubes, can you just go over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button, whether you're a podcast listener or not? Uh, we have a goal this spring to hit 1,000 subscribers. I know primarily everyone likes to listen to this, and that's awesome. Our podcast is doing well, and it's all because of you guys. But share some love. Go over to the uh, Lawn Feed YouTubes and give us a subscribe. We appreciate that. So anyway, today we're talking about spring lawn tips. Uh, there's a lot of different YouTube videos out there. There's a lot of tips that we can talk about. But we're going to narrow it down just a little bit. Uh, I know I'm pretty anxious to get out there. Um, mm -hmm. I did a quick cleanup the other day. Uh, didn't mow anything off, but you know, we're 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 almost in the green light for pre-emergence for that first fertilizer application um, and soil testing and all that good stuff. But we have some frequently asked questions, uh, and one of the most one is, when do we have to do all of those things? And the answer is, well, it depends. So let's dive into that. Chris, let's start with mowing. When should I mow? Mowing. It's mow time. Or at least it's almost mow time. Am I the only one that took the, uh, the, the tractor around the block when I didn't even need to? It was like 45 degrees. I've been just thinking about it. No, I got too much I, stuff I piled up on the mower and in front of it. So I have 10 out of 10 recommend. Your neighbors look at you like you're crazy. But they know. Like 10 times crazier than they already <laughs> think you are. Um, but yeah, it's coming. It's the golden question, right? So when when to start mowing? When to kick your season off? Um, and it's it's ultimately when when the grass decides it's time to wake up. Uh, it depends on soil temperatures. It depends on your local environment. It's not going to be the set date, obviously, of, hey, we're going to start mowing on April 15th for everybody, right? It's it's largely going to depend on your your local area. Um, usually, your lawn will start growing when soil temps uh, get into that 50 degree mark. Soil temperatures, not air temperatures. Um, you may start seeing some greening, uh, maybe even before that, just depending on your precipitation and snowfall and snowpack and all of those different things. But uh, generally, you're going to start seeing trees budding. You're going to start seeing flowers budding. Now, this year's a little bit weird because it's warmer earlier um, in a lot of places that is very different than maybe years previous. So uh, your your landscape and you know surroundings might be a little bit confused at what's going on. Um, but ultimately, right when your soil temperatures reach that 50s uh, consistently is is the key word there. Um, once uh, this, once a point of this happens, uh, you can get your mower out. Uh, you can do a nice cleanup like Vince was just talking about. Uh, kind of do a charity mow. Uh, but get out there and uh, you don't, th we're going to stress this a lot. Don't take a lot off. This isn't something where for a cool season grass, you need to go like scalp it right away to quote unquote, wake it up. This is something where you can just literally take the tip off just the tip. Um, and that will do a lot of good in the long term. It right? usually does. Yeah. Just the tip. It's usually a good thing. Uh, the biggest thing that I think that we always remind folks of is watch out for overnight uh, low temperatures. Um, there's a lot of these days where they will dip down. You will get frost. You will get all of those. Uh, but if you get if you if you're still getting consecutive days where there's freezing temperatures, you might want to hold off just a little bit longer, just so you don't damage any leaf blades by cutting in, um, and maybe doing any like un unnecessary frost damage and and things like that. And obviously, we've talked about this in previous episodes. If there is still frost, do not go and step on your grass. Do not go and mow your grass. Um, so, end of the story there. Uh, when soil temperatures are above 50, uh, you're in the window. And out of the window of consecutive freezing temps, that's when you can probably start mowing and mowing consistently. Uh, mow time. Mow time, mm -hmm. right? So I think we're all uh, ready. One of, one of the questions that I've actually been asked a lot is about pre-emergence. Um, mm -hmm. when, yeah. when to apply those and what's going on there? You know, I've been seeing a lot of stuff about pre-emergence <clears throat> this year, um, especially in the northern regions, um, like on Facebook groups and stuff like that, because of the weird wonky temperatures we've been getting. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's okay if you're new here. Pre-emergence can be, you know, one of those things that might seem a little bit intimidating, uh, but they are literally exactly what they sound like. Pre-emergence prevent weeds from growing in your lawn and 
to be specific, they're an herbicide that help prevent the rooting and shooting of the plant, which then leads to the plant's ultimate death. Uh, they stop a variety of weeds. Uh, the most common one you might hear it called crabgrass preventer. So crabgrass, henbit, poa annua, bittercress, uh, chickweed, and there's a ton more. You know, it all depends on your area, what you're trying to prevent. Um, and there's three most common ingredients that are in these different uh, pre-emergents that you can get. Uh, prodiamine or barricade, as some people call it, pendimethalin, and dithiapyr. Uh, some research has suggested that they recommend that you kind of rotate these every two to three years just to help pre prevent any kind of resistance uh, that your lawn could build up. Kind of like, uh, you know, they want you to get different antibiotics at the doctor because you can get build up a immunity to it. Same kind of thing can actually happen here. Um, these products can come in a few different ways. There's granular products, which are very popular for the common DIYer. Um, there is WDG, which is wettable dispersible granular, and these actually melt in water and then you spray them with the backpack sprayer. Uh, the granulars are the most simple because you just put them in your standard broadcast spreader like you would a granular fertilizer, and then you just go out and you just start flinging it on your lawn, right? Make sure you're using the right amount of product just like you would for a fertilizer or anything else that you apply, but that is the simplest way to go about it. Um, it can be bad if you're trying to put down um, just a little bit of nitrogen uh, because a lot of these pre-emergents that come in granular form actually have nitrogen and other stuff in them. You can find them that might have like a 007. Um, and so you can put down like a full application of that. But if you're trying to keep a lower nitrogen level in the early in the spring, which we'll talk to you about fertilizer here in a minute, um, you might find yourself having to do like split applications of your pre-emergent um, and we will talk in more detail about pre-emergence here in another episode. So we're just kind of giving the, the brief stuff here. Um, liquid applications, so like the WDG products, um, spraying is great. Um, it, you can be very precise and um, just make sure you're putting down the right amount per thousand square feet. The downside is that you do need a battery backpack sprayer and that is calibrated. And we actually did talk a little bit about this in a prior episode. So go, go back and check that out. Um, we apply these when soil temps reach 50 degrees consistently. Um, and that's kind of the big thing that people have been talking about this year is like my ground temperature is in the fifties. Am I okay to be applying it? And it's just like, well, what's your extended forecast showing? Cause like I'm in Michigan and I've been seeing a lot of people from Michigan asking this question. And the answer is, well, do you think your ground temperature will go down based on your forecast in the next couple of weeks? because there will be cold temperatures, cold swings, all that kind of stuff. So just kind of be on the lookout. Um, a few different ways that you can go about testing your soil for temperature. You can use a standard um, like meat thermometer and check different areas in your lawn. Um, we like using greencast.com. It's an awesome website that has soil temperatures in your area, put in your zip code. You can see what today's uh, ground temperature is like a five day running forecast. You can go back and look at years and years ago to kind of see where that day is um, historically that you would be able to apply your pre-emergent at about that 55 degree ground temperature window. So I love Greencast. I've shown a lot of people that and they're like, wow, this is an awesome, awesome thing. And it's completely free. So, um, but more on pre-emergence coming in a later episode. Um, and if, just be aware, if you're going to do your spring seeding, which spring seeding is obviously the second best time to be seeding, fall is best but if you are going to be doing some patch stuff like i will be fixing stuff in my backyard because my dogs are always ruining it don't use pre-emergent because pre-emergent will prevent grass seed from germinating and growing into grass as well so just be mindful of that yeah andrew real quick the greencast uh site that you were talking about greencastonline.com oh yeah yep greencastonline.com it so kind, kind of seems I don't know like what green i don't know what greencast.com will bring up yeah. Um, but in the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to be safe in, yeah. the, in the weird, weird world, greencast online. Yeah. Thanks for catching that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, and actually with the pre-emergence, you actually don't need a pre-emergent every year. Mm -hmm. Um, I know last year I didn't run any pre-emergence. So, so why, what makes you not have to run a pre-emergent? It's if you have an established turf, if it's thick, um, you 
when you have a thick stand of turf, you're choking out any weed seeds from actually germinating and getting sunlight and all that stuff. So um, the weed pressure that you'll have in that that scenario is very low. Um, so you're, you're almost better off instead of doing a broadcast application over the entire turf, um, maybe doing a hand pool job once uh, uh, one piece of crabgrass might come up or something like that instead of putting your whole a whole pre-emergent over the whole thing because um, it also can have a negative impact uh, and impact on your your healthy turf um, it can actually prune your roots a little bit i know pr prodiamine can do that mm -hmm. um, so if you're trying to get your roots deeper uh, and you don't need a pre-emergent don't apply your pre-emergent so just another hey, little tidbit there what while what we're vince talking about just that to, i was about to say what vince was just explaining with roots um if you did a seeding project in like the last couple seasons, uh, it, it, that's kind of what he's talking about, right? That when, when you're trying to mature that root system, uh, you might want to avoid doing a pre-emergent the season or two after seeding for that reason. That's all I had. That's yeah. all I was going to talk, talk about as well. I was going to ask you oh. guys your opinion on um, like if you do a fall seeding, a spring application. But I think you just answered that maybe it's yeah, best to and... hold off. Yeah, and even like you said with the spraying, um, you can prodiamines like 0.35 to 0.8 uh, ounce per thousand. So you can go 0.35, super low mm -hmm. rate, and you can spread that out, um, or you can just do one single application. So you're 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 using a lower rate over the entire yard, so you have a less impact of of sure. um, hurting your turf. So if you're worried about crabgrass. Go, go low, go low. So we just got done talking about pre-emergence. Let's talk a little bit about soil testing. Uh, like you're talking about with pre-emergence on Instagram, soil testing is my first reel that I did this year, my actual educational reel I did this year. Um, so what is soil testing? Why do we need to do it? What are we even looking for? It sounds crazy, but it actually is super important. It's going to be able to give you that roadmap for the type of fertilizer that you're going to need this year. Uh, so what does a soil test do? You take plugs uh, or you can use a shovel and you dig some dirt up all the way around or take a uh, bunch of samples from your lawn uh, all over it. You mix it up, you send it to a lab. Uh, My Soil is a lab, RX Soil is a lab, Spectrum Analytic is a good lab. Uh, we can link those up down below. That way, uh, if you're listening on YouTube, you can have quick access to those. Uh, we also have, just shoot us a DM and we can help you in the right direction. Um, but whenever you send those out, you're gonna get uh, something either in an app or a paper form, and it's gonna tell you a whole bunch of numbers your nitrogen your phosphorus potassium uh you, you know your micro or your macronutrients is uh it's also going to tell you your micronutrients uh, levels uh, and your ph and why this is important is because uh, that dictates what fertilizers you may need to put down that year um if you're uh, potassium super low, then you know that you need to start including some fertilizers with potassium. Uh, if your pH is low or your pH is high, then you will either use some lime or sulfur to correct that. Uh, and having um, a pH that's within normal limits is going to be essential because that is what helps drive that uh, the plant to actually be able to uptake the nutrients uh, and make your lawn healthy and green all year round. So uh, should you collect for a soil sample? Yeah, I think you should, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, go out, see what your soil is telling you uh, that it needs, and follow those steps. Uh, I did have one question the other day. They got a soil test. Their potassium was super low, I believe. It was super low, and he wanted to put down tons of potassium down. These results don't mean that you need to fix it overnight. You're not going to change your soil uh, composition overnight. This is a multi-year step, um, multi-year process. So yeah, you're adding a little bit extra of, uh, let's just say potassium this year or sulfur this year. Uh, maybe next year, grab another soil test and just make sure you're trending upwards or, or uh, changing the pH the right direction that you want to. Uh, it's, it's small steps. It's a long-term play, but it's an important play that helps you, um, make the right applications at the right time for your lawn um, to be able to keep it healthy 
and be friendly to the environment. Yeah, seriously. So I, I always say to people, it's, it's like trying to go on a road trip without, you know, either directions or you blindfold yourself. Like the chances that you get from point A to point B uh, by just guessing how to get there are damn near impossible. Right. Yeah. And that's unfortunately what a lot of homeowners do without even realizing that they're doing something wrong. Like they, a lot of the, a lot of people don't know that this thing even exists and it gives all of the answers to the test. And I, people are like, yeah, it's easy, but it's honestly like, if you want a nice lawn, just go test your soil and just like apply exactly what it's asking to be fed. Yep. Uh, and in two to three years, you're going to have the nicest lawn on the block and you're going to be super happy with the progress you've made. Especially if you've been doing like a four step program and you're looking to take it one step farther. Yeah. Like that's the best way to like literally take it to the next level. Um, that's mm-hmm. like the biggest change that you can make. And it just takes a little bit of education and a little bit of learning. And you can learn. We're here to educate more. you and help you learn. Look at that. Hmm. Woo. Mr. Follow Vince. Us for Mr. More tips. Chris and Mr. Andrew. Follow <laughs> us for more lawn tips. <laughs> But fertilizers, honestly, one of the biggest questions that we get, not only what fertilizer to apply, uh, if you ask us that, we're going to go tell you to get a soil test because we can't tell you over Instagram, uh, but your soil tests in a soil laboratory can tell you that. But when can you start fertilizing in the springtime? Uh, it's very similar to when you want to go put down pre-emergence uh, with a few caveats. Obviously, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, when, when you start applying uh, you're going to start applying fertilizers to some degree, or at least want to, to some degree, right around when your soil temperatures, again, soil temperatures, not air temperatures, are about 50 degrees, and the plant begins to actively grow. For cool season grasses, spring and fall are your active growing seasons. And it, it long story short, if you apply your nutrients too soon, uh, you're, you're literally lighting money on fire. Like you might as well take the cash out of your wallet and light it on fire because you're throwing money away. You're incorrectly applying products, uh, which leads to a negative impact on your bank account, uh, your time, but ultimately the impact on your local environment and the surrounding environment. Um, obviously we want to be really careful of that. Uh, we don't need to go, (laughs) Contrary to popular belief, we don't need to go overboard and quote unquote, wake our lawn up. Uh, as Vince likes to say, we don't need to go to pound town with your spring <laughs> application on fertilizer, right? You just don't, um, no because you. you, your, your lawn is in an active growing period and naturally it will wake itself up. Um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't need food, right? When we wake up in the morning and our bodies naturally wake up, that doesn't mean that we don't need to like not eat throughout the day. We still need to eat, but we still don't necessarily need to eat everything in our pantry right away, right when we wake up. Okay. So we, we don't necessarily need to go pour a whole bunch of fertilizer down our lawn's throats. Too much nitrogen will cause a major flush in growth, uh, which means more mowing, more work for you, um, but more excessive growth for the plant that, just isn't necessarily needed. You'll get disease pressure, negatively impact the plant, um, so on and so forth. Uh, Generally speaking, we always kind of recommend, and this again, always goes back to your soil test and what it tells you that you need. Uh, But in the springtime, I I don't know about you guys, I try to not ever go over a pound of nitrogen uh, right away in the spring, not even close to it. I, I like to just kind of spoon feed that and let our lawn kind of wake up on its own. Um, You might want to consider something like a half a pound of nitrogen, uh, maybe even less than that uh, per application. Um, Especially with granular. You don't want to be doing liquid fertilizer over 0.5 pounds of N per K because that just leads you to potential harm of tip burn and and whatnot. So the one pound of nitrogen he was talking about was more of the uh, granular Correct. Yeah, correct. And when when you're looking at and when Vince said per K, that's per 1000 square feet area of your section. Um, so measuring your lawn, obviously, and then kind of going into that, but we'll we'll get into that part a little bit more into a, a, a deeper level. Um, so you have your 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 fertilizer kind of game plan in terms of like, hey, this is the fertilizer that we can apply. 
uh, now when to start doing it. That kind of gives you some much needed direction. Um, another another nice thing, is, is, at least in the spring, uh, that I like to do is apply some liquids. Um, more more so in like the the spoon feeding you know kind of way. Uh, I personally like hose end uh, sprayers. Uh, Simple on solutions is great for that. They have a whole lineup with a whole bunch of different uh, array of products to kind of help you match what you need for what your soil tests recommend, what micronutrients you might need to to match and complement your your granular program. Um, but you can adjust uh, how you how much NPK kind of you're putting down. Uh, fairly easily with those or a little bit easy, more easily and more accurately uh, than per se a granular. Um, if you don't have a backpack sprayer, obviously those ho- hose end sprayers are a great option um, that give you great results. So definitely be sure to check those out. But ultimately when, when to start applying it, when your grass wakes up, when soil temperatures are consistently over that 50 degree mark, uh, just don't go overboard. Yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> good stuff. So those are some spring tips. We hope that uh, they answer some of the more frequently asked questions that you may be having right now. Uh, so what do you do if your soil temps are not ready? It's not go time. It's not pound town. Uh, go sharpen your mower blades. Calibrate your sprayers. Go get a backpack spray and calibrate it a while. Stock up on your fertilizer. Uh, go stretch... take the mower around the block. Yeah, stretch those you hammies. Go. You got to stretch your hammies. Spring lawn season is starting soon. Um, and thanks again to our friends at Twin City Seed uh, for today's episode. Check them out for all your turf grass needs. And remember to use code LAWNFEED10 for 10% off of your amazing order that you will love so much. Uh, elevate your lawn apparel by grabbing a new Mo time or Big Grass Guy t-shirt at thelawnfeed.com uh, and use code BRAD. 15 for 15 percent off your entire order at checkout on behalf of the entire lawn feed crew mr andrew mr chris and mr vince thank you for joining us and stay safe out there have a great week have a good weekend enjoy parenthood celebrate the wins and we'll catch you next time see you bye see you